fascists, nazis, racists, communists, liars, warmongers, deep state, freemasons, pedophile supporters, big brother, who am I describing? UK, the Labour Party, Conservative Party, if you watch these videos, you might change your political affiliation. The only event that comes near in history to what I'm going to describe to you is the charge of the Light Brigade. I was involved in a secret war in the Oman as a member of B Squadron 22 SES Regiment. And first of all, I'm going to give you a build up to what we were doing and how this event occurred. Our squadron commander died speeding through the Pyrenees Mountains, traveling from Spain to France. He behaved like Lawrence of Arabia when he was in charge of the squadron and he died like Lawrence of Arabia. The squadron needed a new commanding officer. When you get a new commanding officer, they always wanted to prove themselves. So the new officer got everybody to march a hundred miles with a pack on the back, a heavy pack. For young or younger SES soldiers, fitness was uh, self-discipline. Like personally, I'd run 10 miles every morning before breakfast up a, a hill at Hereford. Run up the hill, do a couple of laps around it, and back home. Most SES soldiers did this type of self-discipline, keeping themselves fit. But like a footballer, you can only manage to, this level of fitness till you're about 33, 34. And it was the same in the SES. The older soldiers, sergeants, were finding it very difficult to maintain this level of fitness. In fact, it was impossible. One of the sergeants uh, was fighting and not telling anybody about his uh, joints. His hip joints were gone. Uh, with depression and not being able to do the business, he committed suicide. Why do soldiers commit suicide? That's another reason. I nearly lost my life a few times while serving with the British Army. Four times in Northern Ireland and a couple of other times on exercise with the British Army. I parachuted onto Salisbury Plain with B Squadron SES. Beautiful day, low level job, but everybody managed to land safely. On the DZ the drop zone there was always an ambulance and we had a three ton truck to take us back to Hereford. Being an extra ex-paramedic I thought oh, I'll jump in back into the back of the ambulance and sleep on the way back to Hereford. Unfortunately for me, but not unfortunately, two sergeants pulled rank on me, which is unusual in the SES regiment. But they thought, well, Nigel's got a good idea. We'll sleep on the way back to Hereford. So I got pushed into the three ton truck and they took my place in the ambulance. The only difference was I had my feet towards the cabin and they had their heads before towards the cabin. On the way back to Hereford, the ambulance crashed and they both snapped their necks and were paralyzed for the rest of their lives. Was God looking after me? I was starting to wonder. 
Next, this officer had us to the Rangers. Uh, we, we were issued SLR rifles, standard British Army rifle. Now, everybody is under the understanding that the SES get the best weapons. That's a total false. It's not the fact at that time. We had worn out weapons. The one I was issued with between the front sight and the back sight because of the wear and tear on the center locking pin it had an inch movement so every time I fired I may say it, there's no way I'd hit a barn door the, we completed the, the, the ranges and then the, the next day he took us to a, a valley in Wales and we did a squadron attack up this valley. There was targets placed in the valley, and which we had to engage, but there was many sheep in the valley. And the new CEO said, don't shoot the sheep. Yeah. When officers say things like that, they'll have to shoot the sheep. I had to, I had to go shoot, shooting one sheep, about 100 yards away with this rifle I was issued. And after six shots, I still didn't manage to hit that damn sheep. And that's how good the weapons were given to the SES. Fortunately, uh, when we went to the secret war in the Oman, secret war? What's a secret war? It's an illegal war. That's why it's secret. And things happen in secret wars, which I'm going to describe. Fortunately, Sultan Qaboos had an armory and I took my SLR to that armory, dumped it and picked up an armor line, an American weapon. And with that, I could shoot the eye out of a sheep at 100 yards. That was the difference in the weapons. Senior NCOs had skills which they passed down. Many could speak Arabic, so before we got sent to the old man, we learned a bit of Arabic, like uh, Salam Alaikum, Alaikum Salam, Kef Alaik Al Umdala. Just things that, to make the Arabs happy, that we uh, appreciated that their God was the best God. Keep, keeping the locals happy. It's called winning the hearts and minds of an Arab. The enemy were called the Adu, and they were trained by the Russian Special Forces and supplied by Russian Special Forces. Now, they had an uphill struggle. They were telling the Arabs that Mohammed didn't exist and it was all a load of bullshit. What? Your women are equal, better than goats and sheep. So, uh, they had a struggle. Sultan Qaboos uh, was giving money. If anybody from the enemy's side came over to our side, he'd give them a, re a reward for surrendering. If they handed in a weapon, he'd give them more money. If they took, took us to weapon caches that the Adu had, he'd give them uh, money for all the weapons found. If we killed the enemy, they would get a reward. Moving a body in the old man was not an easy thing. You put them in the body bag and have to, four men have to carry it. So an idea came down to cut off body parts. One of the Arabs that sur surrendered was a high-ranking political commissaire. He'd actually been to Russia in a Russian barracks and been taught how to be a good communist and taught about his weapons and how to destabilize the democracy and uh, all the Russian propaganda. 
There was no need to torture anybody in the old man to get information. They, they were given us freely the information. And this guy turned around and said that in, in, in the uh, room where they were being taught, there was pictures of the best cadets that had done the course. And the number one was a man called Arthur Scargill. Anybody remember Arthur Scargill? The head of the Miners' Union that tried to bring down Margaret Thatcher? Arthur Scargill. And this Arab was telling us about him. I just wonder if Jerry, uh, Jeremy uh, Corbyn had been on the same course because he's a traitor. And we say he supported Jerry Adams and the IRA killing British soldiers. But that's another story. I carry on with this one. On a night time, living amongst the Arabs, there was nothing to do. So I used to spend a lot of time on the radio going through the frequencies, trying to pick up different stations and sometimes you'd, you'd have a fluke like uh, the radio station from Australia. You can imagine things on a radio on a night time with uh, radio waves bouncing around the world. But uh, I was listening to the radio one night and I got did it did da 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 did it did SOS. And at first, let me say, I must be about one of the only people in the world that's actually picked up an SOS. And it was one of the SES uh, groups that had been in the north of Oman and had driven back down into the south and had gone over uh, a landmine. The driver was seriously wounded. It turned out he's one of my best friends, Brummie O'Hare, and uh, the impact of the explosion had uh, damaged his foot to such an extent that he was uh, kicked out of the army, medical discharge. And that was the first one. 25% of my course would be shot and wounded within the first year and a half. One of the teams who had gone out looking for weapons and ammunition caches discovered a massive cache of British 7.62 ammunition. British. Now, what was happening was the British government was supplying Libya General Gaddafi. Normally, and they knew that he was then given the ammunition to people fighting British soldiers in the Oman and in Northern Ireland. In one of the uh, YouTube pictures of a weapons cache handed in by the IRA, you'll see the GPMG mounted in the SF on a back tripod. This is British stuff. And the American money was being used to buy ammunition and weapons. And uh, a big supplier was Colonel Gaddafi. The British knew. And my six knew. But politicians would sell their mothers to get a big arm, arms deal. We're talking backhanders and big money. And this was British politicians. They were giving weapons to the enemy by supplying people like Colonel Gaddafi and other criminal type regimes. This is the British politicians for me. One day I was sent out in a convoy to supply one of the positions up in the mountain, the Jebel. We're driving along about 10 vehicles, 
full of ammunition and things. And I was sitting in the back right of a 10 ton truck. And we went over a landmine, but it didn't explode. The tire had just touched the edge of the landmine and flicked it out of the ground and up into the air. And it came level with my eyes and fell back down at the side of the road. Nobody saw it, just me. And I'm thinking, that's another one my fucking life's got. Nobody believed them if I told them. But that's honestly happened. It needs the, the wagon wheel to go actually over the, the mine or even partly. You need, I think, about 14 pound pressure to set uh, a landmine off. And uh, this one just uh, touched the edge and flicked it, like flicking a button. Well, I was a lucky boy that day. Once a week, we would show a film to the Furka. So we had 100, 200 Arabs. We'd set up uh, a screen using. Uh, bed sheets tied together we had a projector and we'd show a film and this film would be passed around all the uh, teams working up in the jebel so once a week we'd get a film and if it was a woman with uh, taking the clothes off all these arrows would get all excited uh, the, i don't think any of them had seen a woman except the, the odd married one but to have a woman up in the old man, you had to like uh, trade with camels, uh, goats to buy a woman. So not many guys could afford a woman. And that's why uh, the sheep, the goats, and the camels were very nervous. Another film that we showed one night was the film Zulu. And uh, halfway through the film, you got all these. Uh, Zulus attacking the British. Well, Arabs get excited and they're all carrying their AK 47s and uh, other weapons. And this one got up and he opened fire on the screen shooting the Zulus. Then a few more of his mates got up and all started shooting at the screen. <laughs> so it was obvious we're winning over the hearts and minds because. You know, they the were defending us, ki killing the Zulus. But so I had to get on the radio and say, it's all right, we're not getting attacked. We just killed 30,000 Zulus. 